This is Python code refreshing my Power BI dataset. As you can see, it's completed successfully. This is a PowerShell script refreshing my dataset. And as you can see, it's completed successfully. My name's Ned. This is my dog, Jai. And today we're going to be talking about how to refresh a Microsoft Power BI semantic model like a developer. And what that means is that we're going to be refreshing our semantic model without a human. And we're going to be using what's called a service principle to do this. Service principle is a secret identity used by applications and tools to authenticate into Microsoft Azure resources, acting as a non-human user. What it does is it enables applications like Microsoft Power BI to be accessed without requiring an user interactive login. This is different than Power Automate, which is running under the user that configured the flow's uh, credentials. Using a service principle offers two core advantages. One, the Power BI semantic model refresh is not dependent on an individual user. So if someone gets let go, someone's password expires, someone rage quits the company, the Power BI semantic model will still refresh. And two, because it can be called with code, so either Python or PowerShell, you can essentially have the server call the Power BI semantic model to refresh on its own without having to have the server authenticate in like a user. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set that up. And it's surprisingly simple. And then I'm going to be showing you how I've implemented that in both a Python script and a PowerShell script with the help of our AI chatbot friends in less than a few minutes. So with that, let's jump into the computer. First things first, we're going to go to portal.azure.com. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign in. Once I'm logged in, I'm going to search for app registrations, and I'm going to click that button. I'm then going to click new registration, and I'm going to give it a name without spaces. I'm going to leave all these other settings exactly the same. So in this case, I'm going to name it Power BI SM for semantic model refresh. And I'm going to go and click register. Once this application has been created, I'm then going to go ahead and I'm going to go to API permissions. I'm then going to click add permission, then going to click Power BI service, delegated permissions, search for data set, and then under data set, I'm going to click data set, read, write all. I'm then going to click add permission. Once this has been added, we're now ready to move on to the next step. So in a new window, we're going to go back to portal.arjira.com. And once that's loaded, we're going to, instead of searching for app registrations, we're going to search for groups. So let's go ahead and let's search for groups. And then once we're loaded, we're then going to go all groups, new group, and we're going to call, I'll leave this as a security group. We're going to title this PBI semantic model refresh. This group, we're going to say apps. So let's actually go service principle for refreshing Power BI. I'm then going to click owners. I'm going to set myself as the owner, or you could set a team or another Active Directory group as the owner. I'm then going to search for members, and I'm going to search for PBI um, semantic model refresh, which was the name of the app I entered. And I'm going to add that as a member to my group. I'm then going to go ahead and I'm going to hit create. This will go ahead and create a new group called Power BI Semantic Model Refresh. I'm now going to hop and skip over to Microsoft Power BI and I'm going to go into the admin portal. And if you don't know how to get there, you can hit this settings, then admin portal. Once you're in there under tenant settings, I'm going to search for fabric API and I'm going to hit turn it from disabled to enabled, and I'm going to set it for specific security groups. I'm going to put the name of the security group that I just created, so PBI SM Refresh, and there it is popping up. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit Apply. Now, this is going to take approximately 15 to 30 minutes to kick in. So walk away at this point, 
go get yourself a cup of coffee or something. Now that you're back, we're going to go to Power BI Semantic Model, and we're going to go to the workspace the Power BI Semantic Model that you want to refresh is in. So here I am in this test workspace. I'm then gonna click Manage Access. I'm then gonna click Add People or Groups. And again, I'm gonna search for that same uh, security group that we just created. So in this case, Power BI Semantic Model Refresh. And I'm going to add it as an admin. I'm then gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click Add. So now that security group is an admin, we should be good to go to start using our API. Now the two different code scripts that I'm about to show you are just something that I quickly prompted ChatGPT for, which means that the code's probably not super great quality. I also am going to be putting some sensitive information, in particular something called a client secret, in this code in plain text. And that's because, frankly, I don't really care <laughs> if this secret gets out there. I'm going to be deleting this app after this video is published. But if you're working in an enterprise environment, you really should not do this. You should instead put that secret into what's called an Azure Key Vault. So just be aware, this is just for an example. You need to make sure that your client secrets are secure. So with that said, here's the Python code that was refreshing the Power BI data set that I showed you earlier. And this Python code takes three specific variables. It takes a tenant ID, a client ID, and a client secret. And we can get all of this by going back into our Power BI app and then clicking the properties section or the overview section right here, excuse me. And here is our client ID. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy that and we'll pop that in right here. And then here is our tenant ID. So we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll paste that right here. And then we need to generate what's called a client secret. So I'll go down here to certificates and secrets and I will create a new client secret. Now these client secrets expire. I'm going to set a quick one day expiration just to be sure. And I'm gonna title this video demo and I'm gonna click add. Now, this client secret will hide itself as soon as you navigate off this page, so make sure to copy it and then put it in a key vault, or in this case, I'm just gonna be putting it in plain text in this code. And just like that, we should be ready to refresh our Microsoft Power BI dataset. So here I am clicking the run button, and let's see how it does. Dataset refresh successfully. Refresh in progress, refresh in progress, refresh complete. Here's pretty much the same script, but as a PowerShell script. So let's go ahead and let's update these variables. So I'm gonna grab a tenant ID. I'm gonna put that in my PowerShell script right here. Let's go ahead and grab client ID. So I'll grab that right here. And then let's go ahead and grab a client secret. So let's go ahead and grab that and we'll put it right here. And then let's go ahead and run that just to make sure that it's working. And as you can see, data set refresh successfully, checking again, checking again, refresh complete. So how do these scripts know which data set to refresh? Well, let's take a closer look at this code. You see, the scripts are doing something similar. They're taking an input of a group ID and a data set ID. And these IDs are things that you can get by going to the Power BI data set that you wanna refresh, clicking on the semantic model, and then looking at the URL. Here is the group ID. Here is the data set ID of that semantic model. Next, what they're doing is they're going through and they're getting a secret token. If they can't get a token, they're throwing an error. And then they're using that token to essentially post a request to the Power BI service to initiate a refresh. It then is checking to see if that refresh is complete by essentially submitting a GET request for any refresh that started after 
that refresh was complete or that refresh was posted. And it's essentially using a while loop to circle through, checking for the refresh to either be completed or have a failure. Now, I am telling it to sleep for one second. You could adjust these values right here and have it adjust for 10 seconds, 10 minutes, two hours. So you could adjust these variables depending on how long your data set typically takes to refresh to essentially sleep for a variable amount of time. It also would probably be smart to edit this code. That way it doesn't just continue to run in a well loop for infinity. Instead, it auto exits after, you know, maybe three or four cycles through the loop. Now I will post this code on my GitHub, even though again, it's chat GPT code. So use it as your, at your own risk. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and give it a like, and let me know down in the video comments, if you've used service principles before, and if you haven't, if you now plan to implement one, thanks for watching.